Welcome to Age Potential TV. I'm Lori Campbell, your host, gerontologist, and advocate of your best life, here to introduce you to an emerging trend called Age Potential. Here's to living out your age potential. Happy New Year and welcome to the first episode of Age Potential TV. Today's tip to enhance your quality of life is how to create positive, healthy change. I don't know about you, but I love this time of year. New beginnings, new possibilities, or as Nadia Giordana would say, a time to create a chapter in your life. People underestimate their ability to change. Today on Age Potential TV, you will gain a clearer vision of your potential to evolve a new dimension of yourself. Creating a new reality can be downright scary and often requires a change in your thinking, being, and behavior. Change, however, is an inevitable part of life. One can choose change or be forced to change by unexpected life circumstance. Nadia Giordana, a profile thriver in my book, Awaken Your Age Potential, is here to share her experience of creating change. Welcome, Nadia. Hi, happy to be here, Laurie. Now, your change really came from a corporate layoff, a devastating blow you weren't mm -hmm. expecting. Can you take the viewers from that being in the, the depths of that devastation to now living a life you love? I can. Lori, it was 2006. I was 58 years old and only a few years from retirement, enjoying my job when the sudden layoff came. I was devastated. I didn't know what to do. I was paralyzed. And it took a while for me to change my thinking around and, and regroup myself. And I came to the realization that if I could do something about my health, maybe then I could create a new life for myself. And I turned to the one area of my life where I needed the most renovation, and that was my weight. Over the next 14 months, I lost over 80 pounds and came to the realization that I could be successful and I, and I could be healthy. And at the end of that time, I was raring to go again. I felt like a new person, and I was ready to make some changes in my life after, um, above and beyond that one. What actually brought you to the realization that if you were going to have change in your life, that change was really going to be up to you? Having the loss of the job was almost like a death of a loved one. And I needed to get through the grief process first. And that took several months. So then after that, it really was thinking about what I wanted to do and, and needed to do. And back to the idea that it really was up to me and I needed to get in there and do something to make myself feel more successful to start with so I could build on that. Nadia, the first thing that I noticed is you lost the weight. Mm -hmm. Is it fair to say that losing the weight gave you the confidence to create a life of passion versus just find a job? Yes. Once I was making progress and had regained some of my confidence, I didn't want to go back into a, a life like my old one. And yes, I can say that the confidence I gained from realizing that I had done something so seemingly impossible, like lose the equivalent of a small person, it gave me the confidence and inspiration to write about the experience. So what I first did was write Thinking Skinny, and that was a book that was about my weight loss experience. And later on, I came to the realization that for a lot of women, it's about a lot of different things for making change, not necessarily about weight loss. And that's when I wrote Reinventing New Chapters in Your Life at Any Age, geared towards women in midlife who are making changes of all kinds in their lives. And you also addressed your fear of public speaking and now use your life experience to actually empower other women to passionately go after their dreams and aspirations. That's really inspiring. Can you share with the uh, viewers some of the action steps and tips that have helped you create this positive he healthy change? Absolutely, and I would say that the successful weight loss is what gave me the courage and confidence to move into working on the public speaking and a lot of different things and a lot of different changes. Some of the most important things, I have to go back to eating well and feeling better. It's not just for 
the weight loss. When you're feeling better, you're going to be able to accomplish a lot more. So that's uppermost and that is important. I tracked my progress using a food journal and I also made my food changes permanent in my life. You should also remember to keep your life as stress-free as possible. If you do that, you're going to be in a lot better place. I used prayer and visualization to keep my goals uppermost in my mind and to keep myself on track. I'd also suggest stop thinking about your limitations. In my case, one of the things that I did that was most important, I pulled out old photographs of myself when I was slimmer. I tacked them all over my bathroom mirror so I could see them every day. It became a vision board and it worked very well for me. And I'd have to say you should be consciously planning and rewriting this new life chapter that you want to have in your life. For me, at some point, it became like building a staircase. And once I took that first step, I could see what the next logical step was going to be. And I took it, and I could see where I needed to go. It felt good, and I knew what I wanted to do. I like that visual, the staircase. Mm -hmm. Your story really reminds me of the lobster story that Connie Goldman shares in my book, how lobsters actually, through their growth journey, have to de-shell or they'll literally die. So they have to go out to sea being very, very unprotected and vulnerable. I can't imagine. That's probably how you felt, very, very vulnerable at times and really out, outside your comfort zone as well. Wow, what courage. I am just so inspired, Nadia. There's so many people who want to make this type of change, but they don't have this courage. Can you share with the viewers what it would take to muster up this kind of courage? Lori, it helps to be able to take a good hard look at yourself, flaws and all. Realize what your strengths are and make use of them. And wherever possible, shore up your weaknesses. And don't spend any time worrying about what other people think you should be doing. Well, thank you, Nadia. Thank you for being a great role model for positive, healthy, creative change in your life. And most of all, for being an age potential inspiration. Join us next time in this two-part series of how to create positive, healthy change. At 87, my guest will be sharing his latest dream and why he thinks it's important to keep growing, evolving, and yes, changing. <laughs>